Alright folks, welcome to this exciting little video where you once again join me in the wild landscape of Scotland and once again you join me in an extreme rainstorm and I'm still basically on the same trip from the last video when I was up Glen Isla and I just thought there's this amazing little bit of history here which relates to a big castle up the road, Ballantore Castle So this here used to be the little generator shed for Ballantore Castle and the water used to be piped to this shed here with an underground pipe all the way from a dam out on the hill and I just thought it's so cool to come back here and see what's left look at this, I'm in the trainers and it's proper boggy wet conditions here wow check this out folks, the pipe comes in the back wall and it, it used to supply obviously the water to this and it was a turbine generator Wow, it's so long since I've been here. As I was passing the road end, I thought it's so cool to come back and have a look. Document it once again on the channel. I love seeing history like this from an ancient time in Scotland. Kind of what I'm going to do though. I'm going to nip back to the car right now and grab the torch. Because I want to document this properly and we'll be able to see better. It's quite dark there in the shed. And because we're so close to the car, I'm just as well getting the torch for sure. It's mad to think these wee bits of history was powering like a Ballantore castle, which is now a private residence. But it is open for like Airbnb and you can actually stay in it now. Ballantore Castle, Scotland. And it's cool to tell the wee story of the history of like how at one time it generated its electricity here. From water way up on the hill, it was like self-sufficient and self-sustaining. And Ballantour Castle was actually built in the 1800s as a hunting lodge. And I love documenting wee bits of history on the channel, like even how they generated the electricity. It's so interesting because obviously mod in the modern era we're connected to the national grid. Right folks, we're going back into this ancient wonder, torch in hand. I'm needing to get new batteries, but it's still got a bit of life in it so we can give it a try out here in this ancient wonder just look at the way it's built with a little window and stuff like that such a special little building here hidden in this wild landscape it's so overgrown all around whoa i'm slipping on this board here as i try and take a step look at the massive bolts here fixing that to the floor it's an incredible scene of history once again on the channel folks I'm always just blown away by the types of thing that we keep finding here. Wow. I'll hold the torch so the shadow's at the optimal angle here for viewing. Gilbert Wilkes and Gordon Limited, 1931. So that shows maybe wasn't originally fitted to the castle. And then as electricity was introduced across the country, a system like this would have been the latest bit of kit fitted. And that would have been the switchboard across there. But there's some interesting things on it, little devices and stuff here. Look, it still turns. Imagine that, if it started barreling now, if the water started coming down the hill. There's all these kind of valves and stuff like that. And I think that's so when you switch it on and off, it didn't blow the pipes out of the ground. But I think there's been a part bolted on here because you can see this is like seal rings here. So that's only part of the original device. And then all these ancient little taps. Well, I say little taps, but they're massive. Unfortunately, I believe the pipe coming down the hill is actually corroded through nowadays. There's another tap over here. Oh, look. It's got an old tag there. Patent number... What does that say? 18901. It's hard to read it. It's obviously like soaking wet at this side here, so I'm being careful. Yeah, I was just trying to read it. Turgo Impulse Turbine. That's what it says there. Turgo. It's not definitely not turbo. Yeah, so that's cool to read that. Impulse Turbine. It took a minute just to kind of read it and get it right there. 
And you can just imagine these were fitted all over the place as a means of generating electricity often for big houses or big castles. And I believe there is still videos on YouTube of these things like operating because there's still current ones that's been maintained over the years and upkept and they're still actually functional. Electric Construction Company that's what this ECC stands for and all the old systems that you see in old buildings and things. DC Dynamo, Wolverhampton, England, folks. So that shows you, like, it's a British bit of kit here. And within there, you can see the windings and the brushes which are onto those windings. And then the old wire which leads over the roof to the switchboard and you can imagine the person coming in here to switch on and off or to maintain it potentially. Sometimes, I'm not sure about this one, but it may have been remotely operated as well from within the castle. With like an electronic switch. Look, there's been another plate here originally. And then there's been some sort of drive coupling. Cause look, nowadays they're separate, but they're both still spinning free. And then just look at this mechanism here with all the levers, folks. That's what we love to see on the channel. It's like an ancient bit of kit. And often the engineering and the things they did back like hundreds of years ago or whatever, it was so impressive. This is almost a hundred year old, this bit of kit. And it's just incredible to see the way they've made all these clutches and devices for the engagement here of it. And that must have been whirling around at some speed. I'm guessing inside here there must be a set of governor weights where, like, at high speed and stuff, the, the weights will go out. I was just looking at that. There's a little spider running across there, but I, I half thought when I saw it it was a tick because the ticks are strife at this time of year, folks. I keep an eye out all the time when I'm on adventures. Yeah, look at that, the massive motor in there. Still, still battling. And that's without years of maintenance. Look, the wheel lid at this side comes off. It's already off. Well, let's take a look at the construction of this thing inside. That's so cool to see. Look at the size of those windings right there. At the side. Wow. I'll try and get the torch to a decent angle here once again, folks. Think about that, eh? The engineering and the stuff they did back in those days. And look how the brushes contact. You can see the wear on that middle part. And that shows the like years it was probably sitting spinning, generating electricity successfully. And then one day it was just abandoned and disused. Also the castle was abandoned and disused for a lot of years as well. And then one day it was taken over and it's been restored to its former glo glory. And that's so special to see as well, we old places. And maybe one day this place as well could be whirling from water off a hilltop dam. It makes sense to do things like that for like, kind of self-sufficient and self-sustaining. It takes a little bit of upkeep, maybe greasing the bearings and the runners here on the mechanisms. But apart from that, it's just the flow of water, which is plentiful in these Scottish hills, as you may have seen from the recent adventures, folks. So uh, there we go, another bit of Scottish history. It was just a short video and I thought it's so cool to keep coming and documenting stuff like this and seeing what it's all about, seeing what they did back in those days. There must have been some sort of lubrication point there for the mechanism. And you can see how all this is like bolted together. It's big heavy bits of equipment. A lot of the modern stuff so much lighter made kind of really cared about things back in those days. It was built to last. Just check out that light switch as well. It's one of those old Bakelite light switches. Oh, can I flick it with that finger there? Oh, it's solid. It's not going to go. And then look at the old stone roof here, folks. That's what you get on the old buildings. It's like wooden pegs that hold the slates on. Well, the stone slabs. And that's how often, like, old abandoned buildings with these roofs, they fall down quick. Because the weight of those slabs is so much, if the wood rots, it just falls right in. 
And I can see with this construction here, it's full of wood worm. Check it out right there, folks. It's cool to see the way the wooden pegs kind of hook over the top of the, the wood. Yeah, what we could do, it'd be cool to go in the back of here and look at the pipe coming down, but I might actually go up the road rather than climbing through the trees because it's just a pure bog in this area here. Yeah, this is mad. It's cool when it's like rainy to find a little building with a roof or whatever, so it's a sheltered adventure. And like this week, I was working six days, so I only one day of the week here to have an adventure. And little things like this are so cool to see. Here we go, folks. Look at this. It comes right down this low cut out, dug out area here. And this is the pipe here. You can see it at this low boggy section. Here, look, there's an old electrical wire or part of an old electrical pole in the water. Yeah, check it out. This is the old pipe. Look how corroded it is nowadays. You can imagine the noise of the water hurtling down there into the back of this incredible little building. And generating that power, it was the latest piece of technology of that era. I can actually see there's a crack running right down the, se the centre of that. And it's because it's built so low down here to get the flow of the water. But it's actually in a bog. Whereas originally the land would have been drained around a building like that with ditches and drainage areas. The water would have flowed away. So there you go folks, once again on the channel we've documented another crazy wee bit of Scottish history almost gone and almost forgotten in a wee glen road because it was rainy today it was fine to have a wee explore like that at the roadside but it's been a short one and I'm going to end it here thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with the next adventure wherever I end up going 